Paul. And I'm Riz. And welcome to Faraday Studio on UBR TV. Yeah, so the setup at Faraday Studio is basically there's two of us here, which is which is good because we're coming from different angles. Paul's very much coming from a production point of view. He's been doing this obviously for years, producing loads and loads of different music. Um, and then basically, what I, you know, I, I went to Goldsmiths just down the road and, and uh, studied music there. So I'm coming in from a very musical point of view. Every band knows they've been in the studio where you can see the sound engineer, producer, musicians, whoever are in there get tired. Whereas the good thing about us, we can tag in and out and, uh, and bounce off each other with ideas. We make a great team and you know, we've got so much to offer people when they come in here. We've got a wealth of experience and a wealth of musical knowledge and production. And you know, that's what Faraday Studios is about. The recording which I do is, is such a vast array. It can be recording a 10 piece jazz band, it can be recording a 5 piece guitar band, it can be recording and producing a singer songwriter, or it can be recording five young girls wanting to have a party. Um, it's a recording studio, we, we do whatever's requested as a recording studio. My advice to any artist that's looking to record for the first time, well, naturally I'm going to say give us a ring, but you know, there is a reason for that, and that is that we do really enjoy what we do, and we like helping people as well, you know, and, and we, we're not going to, we're not going to lead anyone up the garden path if, if, you know, maybe they've got it, maybe they haven't, you know, um, we're not just going to take their money, we're going to give them the best advice we can. If it's a band, I'd say over-rehearse and under-record because there's nothing worse than a band coming in here and then practicing for the first hour and a half over a track. It's pointless. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Um, so I'd say, yeah, over-rehearse and then, and then under-record. And also that means that if there's something that we feel, you know, as, you know, kind of taking ourselves out of the situation, if we listen to it and go, actually, guys, you should do that chorus twice at the end. If they're really hot on the rehearsed-wise, then that's not going to be a big deal. They'll be all right, cool, yeah, let's just do that now, straight off. My advice for a solo artist um, would more just be know, know your genre you're in, really. Yeah, and, you know, research what other people are doing and how they're doing it, and, and research what kind of sound you want. Only to a certain to a certain point, now, I think if you, anytime you go into a studio, I think my one piece of advice would be probably it boils down is just coming with an open mind really. There's nothing more frustrating for us when you just be like, when you say something like, oh that part could have a string line in it and they just don't even want to entertain the idea, you know. Um, yeah, I mean stubbornness doesn't yeah, go just down well. And I understand why because you know, you're, 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 you've you're got your track and you're putting your high out there on your track and then someone comes in and it can come, it can come off like a criticism, but it's not, you know, it's just, it, you know, we're, we're all in it, we're all in the same area for the same reason, we all want to make a, a track better. Being realistic, a lot of people um, nowadays have a home studio setup, which they realise fairly quickly isn't going to cut the mustard to get them in, in the top 40, you know, because it's just it won't sound good enough. Um, so I think a lot of the time, and we more recently we've been seeing a lot of this, people get a rough picture on Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, and then s bring it in with them, the actual finish. Instead of mixing it down, they bring in, so they've separated it out. And then, in terms of like session musicians, we're kind of doing that te technologically. So you know, we'll be taking their the the melodies they've done MIDI, and then we'll, obviously we've got thousands of pounds worth of plugins and synthesizers and you know um, VSTs with strings and and all that business. So you can kind of you can emulate real instruments with technology now. Everybody obviously knows that, but people at home who you know you have to spend thousands to get to that position. Some of the sessions that we've been doing lately have been um, very much a singer-songwriter that comes in with his guitar, and you know the, the, the format really is that we'll lay down the demo of it first. You know, mm. as in we'll put down some you know guitars and put down some lively drums just to get an idea and. Um, and then we'll bring in the cavalry. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. the fun part, you know, yeah. because we know who to bring in. You know, we've mm. got some brilliant session musicians that are quick and they're good value for money. Yeah, if, if a, sometimes we get, you know, bands that turn up and they, they bring their own engineer or their own producer, and that's totally fine. We're always on hand to assist if, if 
you need be. Nine times out of ten, we end up taking over because who they bring in just aren't good enough. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a studio. We we you know we like to see results, and if that's with us or with somebody else, you know, yeah. we keep our heads held high. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it's good for bands sometimes to have a bit of a team around them anyway, a bit of that security blanket. But generally, what we do if someone's interested in recording for the first time. We'll put them in the rehearsal room and we'll we'll sit through, you know, and we'll just sort of analyse what's going on, and we will work out the weak links, the strong links, you know. You know, we're generally up front. If a band's not ready to record, we'll tell them because not only will it be a waste of their time and money, but it will be a headache for us because if you've got a drummer that's, you know, doesn't know what he's playing and the rest of the band is like trying to keep up with him, um, it's just going to be an absolute mess, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's so difficult being work coming from a recording studio's point of view. Obviously, when an artist goes out there with their track, if it's awful, um, it doesn't reflect well on us at all. Even though it might not be our fault necessarily, they might have been just they might just not be they might have literally formed for two weeks and then they want to get to a studio straight away. And I think you know you have to tread carefully on that, especially if if the tracks are good. You know you have to be like guys, you have to rehearse this as much as you can over the next month mm. and then come up with a few more tracks as well and then you've got more to play with. If I was to recall one song I would like to track, you know, track in a day, another day for, you know, overdubs and start the mixing. But, you know, a good mix really you want to allow a good day for.